Uh, so um, you might want to turn off your video and, and mute yourself if you don't want to be uh, in in the recording. So uh, fair warning, but this way I can I can post it uh, uh, on on uh, YouTube. Uh, hey Joel, good to see you. Hello. Um, I think we're a small enough group, at least we were last uh, week, that um, I don't need to do any uh, the whole big you know group mute. If you if you want to interrupt me, just just un and I see everyone's muted themselves. That's great. Uh, but just uh, just go ahead and unmute, and uh, you can ask a question, uh, and I'll get I'll get started. So today I am going to talk about um, training on on uh, my flight book, and basically. Um, and let me actually go into screen share, I think. All right, can everyone uh, see my screen? Yes, thank you. Okay. Yes, no problem. Excellent. So m I'm more or less gonna be walking through the, the training tab uh, today, but I'm gonna spend most of the time talking about um, signing flights and issuing endorsements and, and uh, those sorts of things. And then I'll spend a little bit of time talking about uh, ratings, progress, and reports. There's not a whole lot to talk about on, the, on those, but it's mostly the student-instructor relationship that has the most uh, uh, complexity and, and nuance and so forth to it. And uh, I would be remiss if I didn't comment on Edward's uh, background. May the fourth be with you, everyone. I, I have to do that. So. Uh, Thank you for, for reminding me on that. Uh, so uh, I'm not even gonna go into slideshow mode. Uh, can everyone see the PowerPoint here? Yeah, perfect, thank yeah. you. Okay. Yeah. Um, if I don't go into actual slideshow mode, then um, it will help me read my notes and remember what I was gonna say. Um, so uh, again, today's uh, topic is, um, is training and with a focus on uh, instructor, student, uh, relationship and so I'm going to try and get into the weeds on that and if you have ideas for other areas for deep dives I think I have one more in the queue for maybe next week uh, to talk about import and bulk uh, uh, edit um, uh, I'd love to hear those I will uh, ask to I, I will take those offline uh, but I'm uh, uh, I, I would like to have those ideas and just sort of the usual disclaimer, today is not a basic how to use my flight book uh, uh, webinar. I'm uh, not planning to go into uh, depth, great depth in anything outside of these areas. Uh, and if you have a product support question, uh, please email me at myflightbook at gmail.com. Uh, I'm happy to dive into, you know, I'm talking here about an individual, uh, hey, my logbook is behaving in this, in this weird way kind of question. If you have a, a question, of course, in any of these areas, by all means, let's uh, dive into it. So uh, I got, uh, what is that, seven eight, uh, areas uh, to talk about uh, before getting into Q&A today. Um, and again, it, it largely corresponds to the training uh, tab on uh, the website. So let me start with a little bit of an overview and then I'll get out of PowerPoint and, and do uh, a lot more uh, demos. Um, I have the, 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 the notion in my flight book of a relationship between a student and, inst and an instructor. And these are two pilots who both have accounts on the system. Anyone can be a student, anyone can be an instructor, you can be both at the same time. Uh, so for example, in my, uh, my flying club, uh, my, well, I, have, I have a few instructors from my flying club, you'll actually see their names in some of the demo here. Um, but if, if one of them wants to do a flight review for the other, then they can be the CFI for the other. Uh, really the only requirement to be um, the instructor in a relationship is, I'm gonna go into uh, profile here. If you go into pilot info and go into certificates, you need a, a CFI or a GFI, uh, a ground instructor or CFII certificate, just any certificate in here. Uh, and for most of, of the uh, scenarios you need, you also need, um, an expiration date that is sometime in the future. Uh, but otherwise, anyone can be uh, a, a CFI in the relationship. And so in that relationship, the, what the students can do is they can request signatures on flights and they can control 
what uh, privileges the instructor has uh, in their uh, logbook. The instructor, on the other hand, uh, can, they can sign flights, they can issue endorsements, they can view um, the student's logbook and their progress towards ratings and their totals, depending on the privileges that the student has, has uh, given to them. And, and if the student has uh, given permission, they can also create entries in the student's logbook. There's also the notion uh, in the system of an ad hoc uh, student instructor relationship where the instructor is not in the system. And uh, in an ad hoc uh, relationship, and I'll demo all of this, the instructor can still issue endorsements and can still sign flights, but they can't uh, do all of the, the other things. It's sort of a very ephemeral uh, uh, relationship. So the primary model for uh, endorsements is a push model. The uh, instructor uh, has a list of their students and for each one, they can uh, just decide, okay, student, uh, student X, you, uh, you've met all the requirements for uh, your complex endorsement or for a, a, a solo cross country. I'm gonna issue that uh, uh, endorsement. So they have to be authenticated. Um, to, to do this. The student, if they're in person with the instructor, can do an unauthenticated uh, endorsement. Uh, and I think I'll actually just stop there on this slide and because and, I'll get into the demo here in a moment. Um, signing flights, there are three basic modes. There is, the first one here is an authenticated mode where you're in person, uh, where the uh, instructor has to actually prove who they are by typing in their password and uh, proving that they are the instructor in that relationship. Uh, the second is that ad hoc relationship. Again, this is in person. You hand your phone over to uh, the instructor and the instructor does a fingernail scribble on the screen. And then the third way is where you don't have to be face to face at all, which is I suppose great for our uh, uh, COVID-19 era uh, where the student can uh, request uh, a, a signature or the instructor, if they have privileges to view the student's logbook, can just uh, uh, view a, a flight and can sign it uh, remotely. That, of course, also requires that they be authenticated. So I'm going to just start from scratch here. Now, I do need a disclaimer, uh, just, just because this, this could get a little bit confusing. I'm running on my development system and I'm running in two browsers. One browser is me. The other browser is a separate account with me as the instructor. And to differentiate them, I've got uh, uh, me in Firefox, which looks like the MyFlight book that, that you've all uh, seen before. And then me as the instructor, I'm running in Chrome, and that's against my staging uh, server, which has a completely different um, uh, skin on it. Uh, Comic Sans is such an ugly font, which makes it so perfect for reminding you that, that you're on a, a different machine. Uh, but I just want people to understand if you're seeing the white background with a not ugly font, that's me. And if you're seeing the gray background with the ugly font, that's um, me as the instructor. So, so hopefully you'll get to see, that way I can show both sides of, uh, of what's going on. So I'll start with setting up that instructor relationship. And the way I, I can do that as a student is I go to instructors and I can see all of my uh, current instructors, they're listed here. And so I'm gonna put in my other email address at hotmail.com and to add my instructor account as an instructor. And it's just a matter of typing in the email and saying add instructor. And that sends a, a request. I don't store that email address. It's only used for the purposes of, of inviting the other person to be my instructor on the system. So now I'm gonna switch over to my instructor's account over in Chrome. And if I go and look at my email, this is what it looks like uh, when I receive that, that message. Eric Berman has invited you to be their instructor on, in this case, it's MFB staging because that's my development staging machine. Um, a free logbook repository. If you know Eric, please confirm by visiting this page. And if I click on that link, it's opening um, uh, the, the MyFlightBook uh, website. 
and asking me uh, if I actually know Eric Berman, who I do because he's me. And I'm going to say I recognize the request, so I'm going to confirm it. And now I see Eric Berman as my student who is on the system here. And so actually, in the, where, this page here is if I'm, because I'm the instructor now, is if I go to students. So if I, just to clarify that, if I'm over here in my student account and I go to students, I have no students who are using my flight book because I'm not an instructor. But on the instructor's account, um, they have no instructors because they're, they're the instructor. But if they go to students, they can see this relationship that I just set up uh, where I, I, am, uh, uh, I am my own student. I hope that isn't too confusing for people switching between the, the, the two accounts here. So the main thing I can do now as an instructor, I'll do this right now, is I'll just, I, is I can uh, view the endorsements that I've given to, uh, uh, to Eric and I can add an endorsement. And if I want to, I can see all the endorsements for all of the students. Uh, right now that's empty because I haven't issued any. Uh, but if I have multiple students, I could just see them all in one, uh, one place. And so here I can look up, I have, I looked up this morning, I have 89 different templates uh, from uh, whatever the advisory circular is that has, uh, uh, God, I forget, I forget what number it is, but there's an advisory circular that's got all the recommended language. Uh, 6165. Thank you, uh, 6165. I did do some merging because there are a bunch of redundant ones in 6165, um, you know, where they broke it out by, you know, for single engine airplane and for multi-engine airplane. I'm like, well, why not just make that a drop down? And so, so I did do that. But, you know, I could, if I want to search for, say, cross-country solo, I can search for it and very quickly find, um, here's the, the, uh, a template for repeated cross-country flights, not more than 50 nautical miles, or for solo cross-country uh, training, or for solo cross-country flight planning. Uh, so this one works great. You can see here's the template. It's filled in the student name. I can uh, put in uh, a departure airport. Uh, you know, I, I fly out of Payne Field, uh, and I can do that uh, up to, let's say, Bellingham, uh, him or her. You got to get the right pronoun. Um, and I can put in whatever uh, weather uh, conditions it has to be. And you can see, because I've put in my uh, instructor certificate and my expiration, uh, it's already filled all of that in. And it, of course, is filling in the date of the endorsement as today. I can, I can, I can fill that in back or forth by a little bit. Um, I think I, I give you a warning if it's more than like 30 days uh, in the past, or sorry, more than like three days in the past, because I don't want you backfilling these um, and then or backdating it. In fact, I also keep, <laughs> if you're tempted to backdate, I keep the date that the endorsement was actually uh, issued uh, as well. Uh, and so now I hit add endorsement and here it is as the endorsement that I've issued uh, to Eric. And if I come back over to my student account and I go back, uh, I go to endorsements under the training tab. Here's the repeated cross country flight. Here's the endorsement that I just issued to myself from the instructor uh, account. But an instructor probably wants to do more than uh, just uh, issue endorsements. So if I go over to my uh, instructors page, I can grant the instructor account privileges to view my logbook. So now if I go back over to the ugly page and go to students, now where it had said just view and add endorsements, I now have two more uh, links. I can view logbook and I can view progress towards ratings because I've just given permission to do that. So if I click on view logbook, there we go. You'll notice up here it says logbook for student Eric Berman. Um, and I can, I can return to students over here. And my son is calling me from upstairs, which he does not need to be doing. So I'm going to ignore that. Um, so I can see his, uh, I can see my students' flights here. I can uh, view my students' totals. I can view my students' currency. I can do analysis. This is the same stuff that you can do on um, uh, the regular uh, uh, 
for, for your own flights on, on the regular part of the website. Uh, I don't know why this is being really slow, but it's being really slow. Come on. I can do searches to find flights. But one of the things that's interesting here, oh, there we go, the analysis finally uh, uh, came up. Let me close that. Is you'll notice, uh, I gotta move the participants thing out of the way here. Um, off here on the side, each entry has, uh, it's a sign this entry. And so what I can now do is I can sign these, any flight that is not already signed. I can click it, here's the flight. And uh, it says signed uh, by Eric Instructor. Here's my certificate, here's my expiration. I can put in my comments, nice job. And I can even check a box to add this flight to my logbook. And it's, it's smart when it does that. So it will reverse things like um, uh, dual time to CFI time. So what was logged on the flight that I'm signing as dual time uh, will become CFI time when it comes into my uh, logbook. Uh, and Dan, you asked me um, if uh, I could also copy over the uh, telemetry when I do that. I just did that coding last night. Uh, it'll be uh, live in the next Excellent. couple of days. Thank you. Uh, I'm not going to actually sign this right now, but. Uh, hey, Eric. Yep. Yeah. Eric. Hey, this is Russ Rosleski. I got a question about this, uh, sure. about the page you, you were just on. Um, if I get, as an instructor, if I get an entry like this, and, well, for example, in your example, you don't have any dual time log. Um, yeah. uh, as the instructor. As the instructor, am I able to go in and just enter that, or do I have to kick it back and he has to enter and resubmit? Well, uh, you would have to, you would have to uh, kick it back, but that's a great segue. Thank you for doing that. If I come over here to my student account and say, can add flights to my logbook, now when I come back here and I'm viewing that logbook, see how we're up at the top right now? It says search, totals, currency, and analysis. I'm going to refresh the page here. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Now there's a new flight uh, option where I can edit uh, the flight and enter it in. So I can't edit the flight that's in there. Uh, or, uh, doo -doo -doo. Yeah, no, I can't. I can't edit it. So I could kick it back, or I could fill it out on my student's behalf, which is obviously a very common uh, thing to do. There's there's sort of this whole tension of you want to. Um, give the instructor the ability to demonstrate how to, uh, how to create a, a, an entry in a logbook and give the ability to sign it and do all of those things, but you still want the student to have control over their logbook. And the, you know, in the physical world, they have that control. They can hand it to, the, uh, to their instructor or they can take it home with them and then the instructor can't do anything. So just for, from a security and integrity uh, perspective, I don't currently have the ability to um, uh, to do that, but you can ask the the uh, the student. You can either put it, put in the entry yourself, uh, or have the student uh, correct it. Uh, let's see. There was a uh, hey Eric. If I can just pipe in there real quick. Um, uh, the way that I normally do it, I normally have my students start off with both a digital and a paper logbook. Um, and I explain to them the pros and the cons of both and everything. Um, and what I do is, at least for the first several lessons, um, I'll always sign both logbooks. But what I'll do is, while I'm still on the plane and they're filling out their tax sheet and putting stuff away and everything, um, I'll do the digital logbook for them. I uh -huh. will go in under my account, uh, click on them, add everything in, type everything in myself, and sign it right then and there. And then obviously put the check in the box so it goes into my logbook as well. Um, then further on down the line, I'll just do their paper logbook for them and to enforce so that they start learning how to fill out their own digital logbook. I'll say, I'm filling out the paper logbook. I want you to go home and do the digital logbook. And once I see that it's done, I'll go ahead and sign it off for you. That way they learn how to use the system and all that kind of stuff. I think that's a, I think that's a great way to do it. Just, just a great way to do it. Um, let me see. Oh, so uh, the one other thing from the student perspective here I was going to show around signing and I'll show how this works in the, uh, in the mobile environment, which I think speaks to your scenarios a little bit, is I can request signatures. And so I, all I have to do is uh, I can go here, and I can say, uh, this flight needs to be signed, and this flight needs to be signed. And I can say, next. 
and I can choose an instructor. So if it's a, if it's a new instructor, then I can just put in their email and it's the same thing. They get an email saying, Hey, you have signatures, uh, awaiting your, uh, uh, your flights awaiting your signature and then they'll create an account if they need to, or they'll confirm their uh, relationship with you. Or I can pick the instructor I just added and say, next, these are the flights. I say, finish. That will now send an email to the, my instructor account. And so now if I come over back over to the instructor account and I go to students, I can see those two flights awaiting signatures. And the red X here means either I can decline to sign it as the instructor or I can, um, as the student, I can uh, withdraw my request uh, by clicking the red X. And if I, if I click this, so again, you can see this one does have dual, same thing. Um, and uh, I, can, I can just sign the flight uh, from there. So let me show how this would work in um, the mobile uh, scenario. So I'm gonna switch over. Uh, can everyone see my um, iPhone emulator on the screen? Yep. Great. Um, signing is always done on an existing object in the database. And so I, all, uh, I always wanna make sure that the flight goes into the database and then you apply a signature to it. And the reason for that is I wanna make sure that what you're signing is what's in the database. And that it can't be modified uh, between being signed and being entered into the database. And I do perform um, a, a, a cryptographic hash on the, the flight in its original state. And I'll come back to that in a little bit. Um, so that when you're signing it, I know uh, what about the flight has, uh, if anything has been, has been changed after it's, uh, after it's uh, been signed. But, but it means you do have to enter the flight and then you sign it. So here's, a, here's one of those flights I just, uh, actually I think I may need to cancel these. Let me cancel them. Because it's be, just because of the pending request. So if I come in here, down at the bottom, this is on my existing flights, there's a sign option. And if I click that, it's actually bringing up the web page here. And you can see uh, I've got five names here, and these correspond uh, precisely to, 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 to the five instructors that I have that relationship with. But I've also got a list of other people who have done these uh, ad hoc signatures in the past, so I can reuse that if I want to. Um, so in, in the case of a digital signature, I can click on Eric Constructor, and you can see that um, uh, I've got the certificate number and the expiration date, and the instructor now has to put in the, their password. So this really has to be face-to-face -face because they have to verify that, yeah, I am, uh, I am this account. And that's really what the signature is proving, is, is that the person with that email address and with that account and that certificate um, is who signed uh, the, the, uh, the flight. Or if I come back here, in this case, I can click on one of, one of my instructors from the club. Uh, and this is, this is one without a, a, uh, or an instructor student relationship. And whenever I do one of these ad hoc signatures, I always make, make you certif self-certify that you're not signing your own logbook. You know, it's a scribble. How do you, even in a paper log book, you can't, you can't verify that, that you're not self-signing. So now I click next because Greg signed my log book before it remembers his email, his, uh, his, uh, certificate. This is the last time he signed my log book was in 2013. So that's an expired, um, uh, expired, uh, uh, uh certificate. But now there's a little signature box here because this is ad hoc and he can do a little fingernail scribble and that will be saved with the flight. Um, there Eric, is I have a question. Yep. Yeah. Is it, is it possible to take that little signature box and maybe um, click on it or something and then be able to turn the phone sideways and have them sign like the whole, use the whole phone as a signature pad? Is that, is that technically possible? No. Just a, uh, I mean, okay. technically, it, it, it's just code, uh, but I don't right. have any functionality to do that today. 
all right. Just asking. I mean, I, I think that would, it might be a decent, because it's so small, it's, it's be hard for them to really get their actual signature in there. Yeah. Um, I'll show you, I actually kind of want it a little bit small and I'll show you in a minute why, why that matters. But let me, let me just for completeness show if, um, if I instead clicked back here for new instructor, then um, I, again, I have to agree that I'm not self signing. Um, and of course the instructor's name and their email address and all of that is uh, blank. Um, there's a checkbox here for I hold an ATP certificate. Um, I had forgotten to, to make notes about that for the, uh, uh, for, for the talk today, but there are, uh, God, what is the scenario? You guys can probably tell me better than, than this. There's a scenario where one, uh, uh, the, the pilot in command will certify that the other pilot was second in command. So they don't, they're not using a, their, their CFI certificate, but they can still sign uh, their co-pilot's uh, logbook. Am I, am I remembering what the scenario on that is correctly? There, this is Dan. There's, uh, there, there is a way, I, I, renewed my, I renewed my CFI as a result of being an ATP in a category, transport category airplane. No, this is, this is on a flight by flight basis, not just renewing your, right. your license. I'd have to look at the, you know, I, I wrote the code, but it's not the flying I do on a daily basis. So I forget what the actual requirements around it were. I'd have to go Send me an email about that and I'll look into it. Okay, but we'll if, if that's a scenario for, uh, for you where, where you want to sign um, the, uh, uh, the co-pilot's uh, logbook, that's, that allows a bypass of, the uh, of, of having a CFI uh, certificate. So let me go back to my student logbook here. And here I've done a search for signed flights just to show um, what these look like. So uh, here I've got, um, I, I did some night currency uh, last year and it was a pilot who I don't have a relationship with. So he just did a scribble and you can see that the um, he, they get a nice little green certificate here, which means everything's okay with the signature. And if I hover over it, uh, I can see the actual scribble. Um, and, uh, and if I print out uh, and include signatures with my printout, the scribble will show because obviously you can't hover on paper. So here's a flight review I did uh, last year uh, with someone with whom I do have a uh, relationship. And so because that was signed digitally, there was no scribble involved. And so when I hover over the little green certificate here, it just uh, tells me the signature for this flight is valid because it's, it has not been uh, cryptographically uh, 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 tampered with. Um, and, and Joel, uh, it, it's, it's this space, which is why I want it to, to kind of fit in that box if I can. So here was my uh, uh, check ride uh, two years ago when I got my commercial multi rating and I modified uh, this flight. So I can hover over it. There's my, uh, my DPE signature, but you see it's got a little red circle slash thing through it because I've modified uh, the flight. And I wanted to show that just to, first of all, show that if you tamper with a flight, I pick it up and, and, uh, and we'll show that. Um, but if I go edit this flight, and I scroll down here. At the bottom, you can see changes to this flight modified. I modified the comments. I put in the word the words hooray. So if I go up here and uh, delete that, basically undoing my change, and I update the flight, and I come back. I'm still on my signed flights. If I come back here now, it's it's so you can see what changes have invalidated the signature. Not every change it will invalidate the signature. Uh, you add, you, if you mark the flight as being uh, publicly visible, that's fine. You add uh, or remove pictures, totally fine. I even let you modify the route of flight because sometimes you'll want to stick the, uh, you know, here, for example, I have uh, the K in front of Payne Field, but I, I don't have the K in front, in front of Arlington. And so you might want to modify that to be K-A-W-O. That's fine too. Uh, but if you modify any of the times, any of the uh, maneuvers or things like that, change the aircraft, anything like that, that will invalidate uh, the, the signature. 
Uh, let me see. So that is uh, signing flights and issuing. Oh, this, uh, so I, I talked about how to issue an endorsement um, uh, push from the instructor. But let me show how, as a student, I can request an endorsement. And I, I'm going to go back to the um, uh, to the iPhone for this because it has to be in person if you don't have that um, instructor student relationship. And so to do that, I would go to the training tab. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so that's my own. I would then click on endorsements, and I can scroll down. Add an, Add an endorsement. I don't know why I'm getting all that. Uh, Somebody needs to be now. muted. Oh, it's someone else. Okay. Yes, please mute if you're not speaking. And here I will choose an instructor. And if I if I pick an instructor who's already uh, who, with whom I already have a relationship, then I can add the endorsement, and they have to uh, they have to type in their password. But if I if I don't have that relationship, so I say new instructor, and click next. Again, I have to certify that I'm not self-signing. And they can find the endorsement, pick the template, and do a scribble. And that, that works. Uh, so so it's, very, it's very analogous uh, uh, model to, to the way an ad hoc uh, flight signature works. Um, you may notice, since I was just over here, notice how uh, the, the, this signed flight uh, just says the signature for this flight is valid because I had that relationship, so there was no scribble involved. If you're an instructor and you, um, and you want to, though, I just added this feature last week. I think, Dan, this was your suggestion. Um, you can add a default scribble. And when you do that, then if I go, I'm going to put in a little uh, smiley face here, then anything that you've issued digitally will get your default signature. So I'm going to save that. And it gets a little rubber stamp here thing so that you, that you know that it's a, it, it, it wasn't done for that particular um, uh, for, for that particular signature. So if I go back to my, uh, my student account here and take a look at that endorsement that I gave myself a little while ago and refresh that page, uh, that should have shown, why did it not show? Uh, let's see. Yeah, so it should show that, um, Oh, I know why it didn't, but it will, it will then show that on, on anything that I've signed uh, digitally. This is why you rehearse demos. They're on two different systems, and so this one hasn't refreshed its, uh, its cache. So I'm going to go into the admin thing here, flush cache. And now if I go to endorsements, I should see it. There we go. So now, now I would see that in my uh, endorsements. So, and that, that would be the case also for signed flights as well. So if you, if you want to, um, do a, a default scribble, you can do that. Finally, as an instructor uh, for endorsements, you can upload images of endorsements that you've done offline, uh, or you can record an offline endorsement because you have to keep track of the endorsements that you've given uh, to other students. And so here, you're, you just fill in the template, you fill it, fill it in, and that lives in your account, and that's your record of uh, the endorsement that you've, uh, that you've given. Likewise, um, on the student side of things, I can, you can add your endorsements, and that's exactly what I've done here. Uh, I have pictures from my old paper log books, and you know, just for for uh, my own sanity, I also keep my uh, 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 uploads of my medicals and of my um, my certificates here as well. And it can be PDF uh, or it can be uh, any image format. Hey, Eric. Eric. Eric, just a minute. What, what again does the rubber stamp symbol uh, mean? That means that, that this is, um, I, I think of a chop, which is a Chinese thing, you know, like a little, or a little wax stamp uh, that people used to do um, to indicate that, that it was them. So th this was signed digitally 
it was signed by, by virtue of the fact that they were authenticated in the account. They didn't do an actual scribble on this endorsement or on this signed flight. So every signed flight that they do will get the, an identical uh, rubber stamp image of their, uh, of their scribble. Got it. So I can tell an end user or a layman that it, 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 it suggests an added level of, of security or, or authentication. Yeah, and it looks better when you print out because signed flights have a little scribble uh, with them, even if, even if no scribble was involved in the actual process of signing it. Thank you. And Joel, did you have a question? Nope, I'm good. Okay. Or someone else did? I have a quick question. Sure. Um, the endorsements we do for students, do they have to come from the list of templates or can we customize the entire endorsement or make, make our own? Excellent question. The answer is uh, the, the, the top one here is a custom endorsement and you, you put in all, all the information that you want. Excellent. Um, and then you know, for, there's also like a 90, no, I guess that would, no, the custom one is, is the one you want. Uh, and you can put in everything that, that you need uh, for that. And then the, uh, if, if you, there are questions about uh, will the uh, FAA accept this, I have a bunch of information on the website. Uh, the answer is yes, they should. Um, there's, if you click the link here, it refers to uh, uh, a, well, the circular is what? 120, 120 AC 120-78A. Uh, and this uh, web page here, goes in excruciating detail, most of which I've just covered, of why I, I believe I am, uh, uh, why I, I believe I'm, I, I meet the requirements of uh, AC 120-78A. And uh, for the most part, I've, I've received um, no trouble. I've had a couple of, uh, a couple of sporadic reports of uh, uh, test centers, for example, thinking that it, it has to be, um, uh, ink on paper, uh, but I've spoken to the FAA directly and they say, nope, it does not have to be ink on paper. Alrighty, so back to PowerPoint. Uh, I already uh, showed this. Um, okay, I went a little far on my demo, so uh, I've shown this. All right, so some other, uh, other notes on this. I talked about the default scribble. I talked about uploading images. Um, I talked about endorsements that you've given to students offline. Uh, I've actually talked about just about all of this except the last point, uh, deleting and editing. Um, so if I come over to my account, you, can, you cannot edit an endorsement once it's been given. What you can do uh, is delete it and reissue it. And so I always tell people to be careful uh, with that. If the date that you put on the endorsement is different from the date that the endorsement is reissued, you know, so you're doing a, 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 an endorsement from three years ago, I show both dates. And that way, it's very clear uh, and transparent that there's some backdating going on. And if it's legitimate, great, it's legitimate because it's a reissue, uh, or you're issuing a digital endorsement for what was in a paper logbook. Uh, but I want, I want that level of transparency uh, to be there. And a student can delete their own endorsement uh, with that little X. Um, I am pretty sure that the instructor cannot delete their students endorse right okay so the instructor does not get the x so again this is a, a, a part of the student maintains control this the instructor cannot delete the students um uh the, the, the students flights and they cannot delete a student uh endorsement can you undo a deletion no deletions are permanent Uh, oh, but what you, one thing you can do uh, is uh, to, to, on the, on the uh, instructor side is that you can, let me go back here, where it says, uh, when you say view all endorsements, yeah, okay, when you say view all endorsements, this will show you all the endorsements you've given across all of your students. And then you can download that as a spreadsheet so you can have a, an additional backup of that. 
Obviously, the spreadsheet doesn't include any scribbles, but it does include a record of, of these endorsements because you are, you are required uh, to keep that. All right, uh, any other questions about signing and, uh, flights and issuing endorsements before I move on? Yeah, hey, Eric, I, I said something in the chat. Um, oh, so I don't have my chat window open. Uh, let me figure out how to get that open. Uh, go ahead. So, uh, so I just ran into that, into this, this week. I got my, uh, uh, my two year, my biannual review done. And uh, my instructor signed uh, the logbook, um, but then we had the wrong plane entered. So I, I went and edited it and it just asked him to re-sign it again, which he did. Um, so that's still valid, right? Yes. I don't have yeah. to go through and delete it. And uh, for, you're talking about a flight rather than an endorsement, right? No, it was an, endor it was an endorsement. Um, oh. You know, and, and so we, we put that endorsement in as I was putting the flight in, you know, at the end of the flight. And it was my biannual flight review what yeah. is what the endorsement was. So you deleted the, the, the faulty one and reissued it? I didn't delete it. I, I just went in and edited it. And it allowed me to edit it. When Once I edited it, it came back and said, the endorsement's no longer valid. Have it re-signed. And then it sent him an email, which he re-signed, and it, everything looks good now. I'm just, I'm wondering I if I should have I think you're talking about it. the flight, not the, you're, you're talking about, because I, do, I don't have any functionality to let you edit this guy. So the, the difference is that the endorsements are not tied to a specific flight. You have a record of them here. So for example, here you can see the endorsements I received two years ago before I took my commercial multi-engine. Oh my God, almost three years ago. Um, but uh, whereas uh, yeah, these, these just cannot be edited. Um, okay. Whereas on a specific flight, um, so if I go, uh, let me find my signed flights. So, oh, so maybe that's where I'm getting confused. Is is a signed flight? So like my my biannual um, flight. Does he also have to go in and do an endorsement for that, or is or am I good? That that's probably more endorsement. Of also, you need an endorsement. Yeah, um, correct. That's what people tend to do is they they do that uh, actual endorsement. Although I've all I've. I've often had people just sign it, do the endorsement sort of in line in the, you know, here, here in line, he said biannual, is it biannual or biennial? I think it's biennial, isn't it? Biennial. Uh, None of the above. It's just a flight review. <laughs> <laughs> but it's required, the word for every two years. But yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, that's what I'm talking about, right? Biannual? Okay. <laughs> Um, well, I'll check. I appreciate that. Thanks. It's kind of like a paper log book. If you look, if you look in your paper, if you have a paper log book, obviously you have the area where you're going to log each individual flight. So for that, for that flight review, he would go in there and he would, he would add a line in saying that you flew for an hour, an hour and a half, two hours, whatever you did, whatever. And he would endorse it. He would sign it. But I think it's semantics that are getting in the way. You have a yeah, log book entry and then you have the page at the back of the book, which is what he's showing right there, which should yeah. be kind of like a normal endorsement that you would get for pre-solo, this, that, and the other. You should sure. have an endorsement for your flight review that he should have given you in your digital logbook. That's kind of like the back of your paper logbook. Got it. Okay, that he did not do. So I'll, I'll have to go back to him and, and, and have him do that. I appreciate it. Thanks, everybody. So, yeah, and the distinction I'm, I'm making here is, is in my flight book, an endorsement is a thing that is not tied to a flight. It, it's that simple. Um, and, uh, but, but I think Nick's right. I think technically you're supposed to have both. Uh, I'd have to look at the, uh, cause it might just say you might have, have to have, well, actually I think, yeah, I, I, I'll look on whether it says you need two things or it, if the signed flight can constitute that endorsement. You have it's to supposed have to have all the legal mumbo jumbo wording from 6165 in yeah. order to make it legit. Yeah. Uh, in which case, I probably need to go back and get that from, <laughs> from my last and it's And it's changed over the years. So the wording used to be shorter. Now it includes putting the pilot certificate number in and their rating and some other things if you look at that advisory circular. So it's just best to do whatever word for word, um, you know, in the AC and then you, you're covered. But most people kind of miss a lot of that. They're like, well, this was the flight. This is flight review, you know. I think 
the FAA is not going to bust your chops over it, but they're going to educate you that, you know, next time you get a flight review, get one that contains the wording that says you pilot certificate this or flight reviewed in accordance with FAR, you know, 61, 57. So just out of curiosity, should they be busting the student's chops over that or the instructor's chops? Yeah, right. Uh, well, well, <laughs> probably both. Yeah, it depends. A student technically, I mean, if you're thinking like a private pilot student isn't going to know. So as an instructor, it's one of the things that gets neglected as far as people realizing that it's actually a different endorsement. You know, most instructors don't even spend any time telling you about, you know, hey, in two years, you need an endorsement in your logbook. Um, so it's, it's easily overlooked. Um, I'm guilty of it. I went three years once, you know, as a private pilot. And I thought getting training as a for high performance endorsement counted, you know, and you know, only later I realized, uh, like, I don't think that counts as a flight review. So went got one, but yeah. Yeah, I, uh, I tend to uh, put it, I have to have a flight review every year. Uh, our club requires it. So I don't really worry about the FAA every two years. But what I do do is uh, uh, I, I've created a bunch of stickers and I just simply put a sticker in the back of the, uh, the log book that has all the verbiage. So we just fill in the blanks and, and go. Uh, and, and the instructor that I fly with every year really appreciates that. Yeah, a lot of uh, a lot of people uh, do that. Uh, and when I got my multi uh, uh, the first time, uh, which was before before my flight book even existed, I got uh, little little stickers in the back, and they would fill in my name and their CFI number and all of that, and uh, that was my endorsement for test prep. All right, well, let me move on to uh, the the remaining stuff in the um, uh, in the training tab. So let me go first, I'm gonna skip over ratings progress just because uh, of the PowerPoint order here. I have three reports here. Two, one of them is new since last week uh, and uh, two of them have been exposed since last week. So I have an 8710 uh, report, uh, which, is, which is great because that's what you need when you're going for your, for your check ride. Um, the main thing to talk about here is it, it, there are a few things that I have to infer or estimate. Um, generally, I think my estimate or inference is going to be more accurate and more complete than what, what it would be if you logged it yourself. So it's mostly around uh, things like cross-country solo and cross-country in instruction. Because uh, I, I tend to be a stickler for not recording these not making you record all the possible combinations. You know, if you go for a, a two hour night cross country uh, uh, instruction uh, training flight, there are 17 different combinations of that uh, that you could record that as that the computer can figure out a whole, uh, a whole lot easier than you can. It was night cross country, it was night dual, it was cross country dual, you know, all, all of those different uh, permutations. And so for things like cross country instruction, I just look on a flight by flight basis and take the min of the cross country and the, and the dual, that's your cross country uh, instruction. Similar for solo, similar for PIC and SIC. Uh, and that actually works really well. Uh, and that way you don't forget to log things and you don't, uh, and it tends to be uh, uh, very accurate. Um, and then uh, for instrument, I'm adding up uh, simulated and actual. Uh, and I'm for night takeoffs and landings. I'm assuming that if you logged PIC time, that that you were the P PIC when they were uh, logged. Um, I had the uh, this report, the roll up by model, uh, until last week. It was on the, the 8710 page. It was just sort of buried in a, a little radio button. So I've promoted this. This is in the airline apps uh, uh, application format. Um, so it's broken down by. Uh, the ICAO model of uh, aircraft, and I'm giving the data that basically the airline apps uh, website um, uh, offers. And then the new one uh, that I did uh, this week, and that is now the format if you get the weekly mail, uh, it's just a roll up by time. So I show uh, all time, and this is your basic totals, uh, but all time, what do you have this month? What do you have last month? What do you have year to date? And what do you have last year? And that's a little bit smart. Uh, on Friday, which was May 1st, uh, the this month column wasn't there. And on January 1st, the year to date column won't be there. Um, but it's just a good 
place to see uh, at a glance sort of how you're trending. And these, like the main totals, are sensitive to a search. So if I want to say, just take a look at my trailing 12 months uh, I, and do find matching flights, blink, now uh, the, the search is, is restricted to just flights in, in the reports are re restricted to just flights I've done in the last 12 months. So next uh, up, I think, was ratings progress. Did the math today. I currently track your progress against 105 ratings spread across um, 10 different groups. So if I go into ratings progress, I've got 10 different groups of possible ratings, private pilot, instrument, recreational, ATP. I've got some ESA ratings in here, some CFI ratings. So you just pick the, 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 uh, the rating you're looking at and then sort of the specific privilege. This is where all the numbers come from. So uh, airplane, single engine, land, gyroplane. I have Canada licenses, South Africa, um, uh, uh, Australia uh, uh, ratings. And you just pick the rating that you're looking, that you're interested in. And the, the, the system produces a report uh, that tells you how you're doing uh, against that, uh, the requirements for that uh, rating. So this is all experience requirements. And so there's a few things that are worth noting here. Uh, most of the requirements are very straightforward and they're monotonic. They, you, you, once you, once you've, you've reached the threshold, you've reached the threshold forever. So like 40 hours of flight time, your flight time never goes down. So once you've met that, you've met it. Um, most of the ratings, at least for the FAA though, have uh, oh, this is because of, uh, have a requirement like this one: three hours of flight training in a single engine airplane within two calendar months prior to the exam. This one does decay. So um, this is showing that I'm good because today I put in a couple of of test flights for this uh, for this demo that included dual time, and, and dual time is how I'm determining flight training. Um, and so if I now wait a few months, this is going to decay. Because what I'm trying to answer here is not, have you ever had three hours of flight training, uh, two months? I, I don't care if you took the, the check ride uh, three years ago and, and had met this in time for the check ride. My, I'm trying to answer the question, are you eligible to take the check ride today? So I'd get a lot of questions about that. Um, there are a few other things I often get questions about. Uh, let me take a look at my PowerPoint because that'll remind me of them. Ah, so that your long cross country, I get, often get quest questions about that. I measure the distance. Uh, so, so it doesn't matter what you fill in for the distance uh, flown field. If it's solo, I got to see solo time. If the landings have to be to a full stop, I got to see full stop landings. Um, if it needs to be at night to a towered airport or, or uh, uh, I forget what the requirements are, but there's one of the rate ratings requires towered versus non-towered. I need you to record those and landings are done as subsets. So you say you have, you have four landings total, you put four in the landings field. If three of those were to a full stop, you'd put three in the full stop field. If two of those were at, a, a towered airport, you'd put two in the uh, uh, towered airport landing field, even though two plus three plus uh, two plus three is more than four total landings. So uh, they're all done as sort of subsets uh, of each other. Oh, here's, here's where the towered and non-towered was. It was right here in the private pilot. Um, and uh, the, the main other question I often get here uh, is in the commercial rating, uh, you're allowed to substitute duties of, of pilot in command with an authorized instructor on board for your solo time requirements. And I support that, but there's a whole bunch of nuances about that. Um, and um, I'm just going to say, look in the blog. Uh, I have a whole post about that. Uh, otherwise, it'll, it'll take the rest of my time here uh, to talk about that. Uh, you ha the, the, the short summary is you have to do either all solo or all duties of, P of PIC with an instructor on board for that. And it looks like, Nick, you're going to ask a question. I'm not going to ask a question. I'm just going to say thank you so, so, so much for this 
seemingly small piece um, that you're talking about. Um, this is the very first thing that I start my students with is showing them this because as an instructor, you're supposed to show them, be able to show them where they are in their, in their training and stuff like this. And obviously most people take more than 40 hours to flight train, but it's nice for the students to be able to look at this and be able to say, oh, look, I'm coming up close on being able to meet everything or, hey, I've still got to do, you know, three hours of uh, simulated instrument time and stuff like that. It's really, really, really good tool for the students. It's really, really, really good tool for the instructor. Um, it's just a just a great all round tool. And I applaud all the work that you put into this because this is this is the selling point on the digital logbook as far as I'm concerned, especially when it comes to training. Um, I've I've looked at other digital logbooks and nobody else has this. And it, it just makes a lot of sense and it makes my life as an instructor and as a student you know, a whole lot easier. Well, thank you. My God, that's incredibly kind of you to say. And I did not, for the record, I did not pay you to say that or, you, or even <laughs> ask you to. Um, oh, two other things I'll say on, on this. One is read the notes. Um, sometimes there are exceptions or substitutions that I, that I may not allow. Um, so the notes are, are important. Um, and the other thing that I'll say is that if uh, going back over to my, the ugly tab here, if your student has uh, granted you permission to view uh, their logbook, then you also get uh, the ability to view your students' uh, progress towards rating. So you can keep track of that as well. So as an instructor, you should encourage your students to grant that permission. All right, I, I just got a few more minutes before we'll, we'll go into Q&A and, and hit our one hour mark as well. Um, and as soon as my, uh, here we go. So the main other thing I wanted to show uh, was achievements. Achievements is meant to be fun. Uh, these are little badges that you earn for, for uh, uh, hitting different milestones. Um, uh, I'm, I'm always, people ask me if I produce a list of the uh, available achievements, and the answer is no. Um, you, you're free to read the source code if you want, because my flight book is open source. Um, but I want it to be a little video gamey where, you know, you're shooting Nazis and then when you suddenly shoot a hundred Nazis and you get an upgrade to your gun or something that you didn't know was out there, but hey, look at the achievement you've made. Um, but that said, you can see you get achievements for some of your basic training. You get achievements for, for getting different ratings, which I, which I do by check, right? And you can, you can click on, on the, um, uh, uh, the link below the, the little badge here uh, to see uh, the flight that, that set you over the edge for that achievement. And it'll actually show you there, as you can see down here in the, uh, in the result. Um, and some of them are blue. Some of them, uh, a blue badge is something you earn or you don't earn. Um, others have, have ranges to them. So they might be silver or bronze or uh, uh, gold and maybe there are higher levels, um, and I'll 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 expose uh, a couple of others here. Uh, you know, I've gotten I've landed at every public use airport in Washington, Oregon, and uh, and Hawaii. There may be other similar kinds of achievements that that you can that you can do, and they don't all involve landing at all the airports uh, in a state. Um, that's the main thing on. Uh, uh, on achievements, but there's a second uh, piece down here, which I include in the uh, weekly and monthly email, which is your flying stats. And by default, at least here, it's showing you for all dates. And it's just stuff like how many flights have you logged? How, what, what, what day had the most flights on a single day? How many airports have you visited? What was the most airports you did in a single flight? How many aircraft uh, uh, have you flown? How many models? Um, so just some fun stuff. And you can filter this by date range. Um, and, and it'll just tell you for within that date range. Uh, you can do a custom date range if you, if you want. And there's a little copy to clipboard thing here. So if you press that, it'll put it in the clipboard and then you can post it to Facebook or send it an email to somebody. You can also, if you click down here, view a calendar of your flying. So here it's for the past 90 days. And I can see over the past 90 days, um, here are the two demo flights I put in uh, for today, but uh, here are my flights for April and for March. I have not been doing a lot of flying, as you can see. Um, 
you know, especially since these two May flights are, are dummy flights. Uh, and you can click on these uh, to see the flights for, the, for those days. Eric, while you're there on the calendar, this is Dan. Uh, yeah. What are the grayed out dates? Oh, uh, standard calendar thing, February 1st. Got it. Got it. <laughs> okay, overlap. Yeah, yeah, it just squares out the, the, the month. Uh, so yeah, the, the, the gray one here for March is April 1st. That's all it is. I think, uh, great, right at the one hour mark. Uh, happy to hang out if, um, uh, if, if you have uh, questions and answers, but that's my material. I, I apologize I didn't leave more room for Q&A. <laughs> uh, but I'm happy to hang out for any Q&A. Eric, it's Paul Dioria. Uh, been using it for about a year. Absolutely love the app. Did I just hear you mention a weekly or a monthly email? Yes. If you go into uh, your preferences, and go into email notifications. You can turn on uh, currency, weekly currency or weekly totals um, or uh, totals and currency. I also have this uh, as needed uh, thing, but that's, uh, uh, that's one of my gr uh, gratuities for people who donate, I think at the $10 level. Thanks, I just shot a glance at that area and I, I, I must have gone right past it. I see it now, thanks. You're welcome. Eric, hey, Eric this, is, this is great. I really appreciate it. Um, unfortunately, I wasn't able to join until about halfway through. Uh, is, is this recorded or do you do this pretty frequently? It is recorded. Um, I wish I weren't doing it frequently. I'm doing it frequently now because so many people aren't spending a lot of time flying. But I think next week I'm going to do um, an import uh, uh, one. Oh, so this is recorded. In a few hours, I'll put it up on YouTube. Uh, quick, quick answer there. Um, next week, I think I'll do uh, import export um, be to, because I think there's a lot to talk about there with bulk editing or especially if people are, are home twiddling their thumbs because they can't fly. It's a great time to get your paper log books uh, into uh, a, a spreadsheet. And there's actually a lot of uh, a lot of good stuff that we can talk about there as well. And last okay, week I did uh, last week I did a tips and, and, and tips and tricks uh, webinar and that's already up on YouTube. If if you go to the videos link on the bottom of the uh, of the website, that'll that'll take you there. Yeah, see it's right there. On the Great. ratings progress, I, I noticed something uh, when I was working towards my instrument uh, a while back that if you split up your flights into each each leg as a separate entry in your logbook that it doesn't recognize that as a long you know for example the long cross country um, besides obviously combining those in, into a single entry with multiple legs are there any other workarounds for that or just something to be aware of no that's uh, it's actually a really good point and it is something to be aware of it's really the only way I can look at a pair of flights and say you know, is this a flight as uh, as required um, you know in the case of Actually, in the case of the instrument one, I'm looking at it. I don't think you have to have any landings other than, um, but, but you have to have the, the approaches. But if you do land and refuel, that's, exactly. that's fine. That's totally fine. So uh, I do recommend that people put that in as a single entry. Um, if you're using the mobile app uh, press and recording the flight, for example, press the pause button. It's the little green um, uh, apostle. Yeah, it's the universal symbol for pause. Um, you press that. You, you fuel up, you eat your hamburger, you get back in, and you press what, what has then become the green triangle and it'll resume. Right. Hey, Eric. Yeah. Yeah, I got a, a quick, hopefully a quick one for you. Uh, last week, you talked about how to save queries. Um, and I thought that was great. I didn't know that before, thank you. <laughs> because I do a lot of that as a lot of instructors and uh, you know, contract files and stuff do with filling out insurance paperwork or job applications and that kind of thing. Um, is there a way or have you considered making almost like nested queries? Some of these applications in uh, insurance stuff, I fill out, they want the time in a certain model, last 90 days, last 12 months, last three years, last five years, you know, then another model, all the same things. And you can do that in here, but uh, you know, it's a bunch of going back and forth between the different uh, search options. Is there a way maybe to 
make it so I can save a query that just does that, almost like creating an 8710. Yeah, uh, th it, it's hard. Um, that's part of why I did uh, this one and the, and the buy model uh, one, which is the airline app. Uh, it, it generally requires some custom, uh, custom work to do it. Um, that said, if you want to shoot me some of these uh, reports, I can either modify these guys to include um, some of them. So for example, this doesn't have trailing 90 and trailing 30, maybe it should. Um, or I can, I can look at making new, uh, uh, new reports. Uh, but like I, what I'm doing, for example, for these totals, this is the result here of five separate queries. I do a total for all time. Then I set, the, I set it to this month and I do the totals for that. So this was actually a, a little bit of code that I had to write. It's not just a matter of, of, of nesting, uh, uh, nesting it. But yes, yeah, so shoot me um, some, uh, some reports and I'll look, at, I'll look at adding them. Well, I don't know if I want you to make you know, just a one-off thing for me. It's nice. So. No, but you're probably, <laughs> the thing is that your odds are you probably uh, are not the only one who needs that data. I, I'll, I'll send you something in, as an example. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and by the way, of course, notice here where you know, here I'm breaking up a category class, but you were saying they wanted it by model. If I go into preferences, currency totals, if I do it by model, uh, say update preferences, then if I go back, Now it's broken out. Uh, here I'm breaking out by, by models. So a 172S is not the same as 172M, but I could actually go one step further and, and break it out and group it by um, uh, ICO uh, designation. So now uh, that all the 172s will be the same and I can still get that, uh, that break out by time. So here you can see one, see 172, C 177. Uh, if it's just a matter of adding more more times or or, or different layouts, so send me what you got, and I'll t I'll take a look. Eric, I got one other question. Um, so <clears throat> I have an airport that happens to be exactly fifty nautical miles away from my home airport. So um, since I'm a new pilot, I'm trying to get as much cross country as possible. Uh, mm -hmm. But when I put those two airports into my flight book, it comes up as forty nine point nine miles, so it doesn't count it as cross country. <laughs> So um, now I can, you know, obviously when I go in and I record my hours, I say, you know, one hour of cross country or however long it took me. Uh, what, but is there any the way that I can change? What, what are the airports? Uh, uh, my home airport is KMLE. Yeah. And the other one is, uh, it's in Atlantic, Iowa, and I can't think of the airport code right now. Oh, okay. But I, this is one of those judgment calls. It's supposed to be for the purposes of uh, the, whichever rating requires 50 nautical miles, it's supposed to be 50 or more. I'm looking at the GPS distances from the fixes that I have. Uh, if the fixes are in the wrong place, you know, if they should be on the middle of the runway, but they're over in the terminal area or something, I can move it and that might, that might uh, fix it. But in the general case, if the distance is 49 miles, it doesn't count. Uh, if it's 49.9 and you think it should count, uh, then, uh, you know, because you started from the, from one end of the runway that makes it 50.1, you can use it. And when the, when the, uh, DPE asks you to point out that, uh, the flight, well, first of all, the DPE is probably not going to know that the, <laughs> what the actual distance is, but if you know, if, if they're looking at the, my flight book report, which isn't going to pick it up because it's not technically 50 nautical miles, um, the, uh, 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 then you can say, hey, I, I disagree with my flight books measurement on this and they'll accept it or they won't. Um, for the most part, that is a bigger issue on the long cross country, you know, the 100 nautical mile or 250 nautical mile or whatever they are for the different ratings. Um, uh, for, for purposes of logging your cross country time, if you think it was cross country time, put your, or you think you flew more than 50 nautical miles, put in more more than 50, uh, uh, put it in, in the cross country field or put in a, you, you overflew a VOR, 
that it, then put in the VOR in the root because that took you, that will extend you from 49.9 to 52.1 or whatever it's, if the VOR is close. Okay, actually, that, that's a for truncating versus uh, rounding there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's so, actually a good suggestion. I think I'll do that from now on. I'll just, because um, I, you know, I, I have GPS um, vectors in there that, that I can put in as well, I guess. So. Yeah, and if it doesn't have, if the system doesn't have the waypoint, uh, so, so just some quick tips on this from last week. If, if, if the VOR shares a name with an airport, I'm gonna use the airport. So use the at sign prefix for it, and that'll tell me, oh, use the, use the nav aid. And if it's not in the system, you can add it. Um, or you can even do at sign uh, and the latitude longitude. Okay, great. I appreciate that. I'll do that from now on. Thanks. Great. And someone else had a comment there about truncation versus rounding? Yeah, I was just mentioning that uh, truncation versus rounding and maybe an option to drop the tenths of miles, which probably isn't really significant. <laughs> <laughs> Perhaps, but uh, I, I, that one I'm a little reluctant to because uh, this isn't you know, data entry. This is, I can measure the two points very, uh, very precisely. But you're right, because you're an airport itself. If it's got a 5,000 foot runway, there's a whole mile right there, isn't there? Oh yeah. Are you doing great circle calculations or just uh, straight, trig straight trig? Okay, good. And that, that, that other that, airport that's, is that's uh, a mile right there also. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. That other airport, Eric, is AIO if you want to see it. Okay, so uh, I'm going to click on Atlantic Muni. Uh, you know, arguably, <laughs> arguably it becomes a little bit, yeah, 49.6. Uh, you know, if, 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 if that had been over here on the east side of the airport, that might make a difference. If I put it more to the middle, probably not. And Millard, uh, yeah, that's pretty centrally located. I think you might be pushing that one. <laughs> okay, <laughs> all right. Yeah. Again, I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, uh, raise my hands and say all I can do is report well, the distance as I measure it. Your mileage may vary. It's it's up to you. Yeah. Fair enough. Fair enough. I appreciate it. Thanks. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you, everyone. Uh, I I appreciate you taking time out of your day. Um, I think I have a topic uh, for next week. Uh, I got to actually put it together and um, put together some demo stuff. But as always, uh, don't hesitate to contact me with any questions, uh, either an email or uh, on Facebook. Um, and I'm always happy to, uh, to share any answers or to take any future suggestions. Great. Stay Thanks, safe, Eric. and I hope everyone can get back in the air uh, sooner rather than later. Thank you, Eric. Stay well. Thanks, Thank Eric. you. Thank you very much. Thanks.